Welcome back to your home garage and in today's video I want to show you a safe and proper way to jump start your car with a dead battery. So let's start by preparing our vehicles. So there's our disabled vehicle right there. What we ended up doing was just moving our good vehicle, our good battery, close enough to it. What you want to do is you want to have somewhere around two feet or so in between so you have enough walking space and you want to make sure that your cables, jumper cables, are long enough that they're able to reach post to post. Now you're not always going to have this particular situation where you're able to put one vehicle in front of the next. Sometimes they're going to be side by side if you have that capability or if your jumper cables are long enough and you happen to have a car inside of a garage like, like this situation, you might need something that's able to get from the front of one vehicle right to the front of the other one or remove a battery. But in this particular case, we've got our vehicles that are able to go front to front. So let's go inside of our vehicle. prepare both vehicles exactly the same way. Automatic transmissions should be set to park. If this was a manual or a standard, it would be in the neutral position. Handbrake for safety up on both vehicles. Now let's look at the electronics on, on both. Anything plugged into the auxiliary ports or power outlets, let's make sure that that's unplugged. Um, fans, air conditioning, heater controls in the off position radios in the off position and it's daylight right now so we don't need the we don't need the light so let's make sure that that's also off of course if it's nighttime you're probably going to need that for safety so that'll be okay then but right now we don't so let's make sure that that's in the off position the only thing on the good vehicle that's turned on is just the dome lights but of course as soon as i close the door that will turn off the point is we want as much energy and power going to the discharge battery so by having everything turned off it's only going to help with that and lastly is a safety precaution um, the key is out of the ignition we're just going to put that in a safe spot right now as we hook up the jumper cables so let's go ahead and do that so with our jumper cables on the ground and spread apart not tangled you notice that both sides look exactly the same so both ends have a red cable for the positive there you go and a black cable for the negative or ground we're going to take this side here and we're going to use that on our good battery and then we're going to take this side over here and we're going to use that on our discharge battery so let's go ahead and take a look at the battery and see what we're dealing with there so just like your cables you're going to want to identify where the positive and negative is on your battery so right here you can see that they're clearly marked uh, this is positive this is negative and most batteries come this way and they'll help you out here's a negative mark as well that dash just above the negative post sometimes they come with black cables and red cables to help identify this one here um, unfortunately doesn't have that but it has a good identifying mark right on here so we're going to go ahead and remove this casing over the positive to expose the positive post because we're going to be using that in a, in a second and if we take a look at our discharge battery you'll see it looks exactly the same way here is our positive post so we make sure that that cap is up or removed there's our negative post right there now of course this is our discharge battery so we're going to hook up the cables just slightly different on this one but one of the things we want to make sure is it's always about safety and you're dealing with battery and sometimes there's some corrosion on these battery terminals so you're going to want to make sure that first battery terminals are nice and tight so you get a good connection so in case they are loose all right go ahead and tighten them on both on both your good and bad battery wear some gloves if if you have them accessible to you because again any sort of protection on your hand is better than nothing and if you have safety glasses go ahead and put those on as well now just before we go ahead and install the cables if you can't remember what order they go in because we're always going to start and end with the disabled battery or the discharge battery if you look inside your owner's manual as i did inside um, for this honda civic you'll see under handling the un unexpected is the jump starting um, instruction so most manuals will actually have this inside of it so your owner's manual is always a good reference point so one of the things to keep in mind is make sure that these leads or these ends are always separated every time you're handling them even though there's no current right now it's just a really solid practice and you'll see on the ground i've got the other two ends separated as well so let's go ahead and connect the positive end to the positive terminal you're going to want to make sure that you've got a really good connection there and it won't go anywhere now i'm just going to take the negative for now and just leave that aside. Now let's go ahead and hook up the positive 
to the good battery. So on the fully charged battery, we're going to go ahead and hook up the positive to the positive. And again, we already know the left post here is the positive based on our indicator here. And on our negative or our ground, we're able to use the post on this one here as well. So we're going to go ahead and hook that up. Give it a little bit of a a little bit of a wiggle make sure that they're both nice and solid now on our drain battery or our dead battery we're not going to use the post let's go ahead and show you exactly how we're going to hook up that negative cable so our final step in hooking up the jumper cables is now the negative lead on the dead or discharge battery so unlike the good battery where we went with uh, we went with the post we're not going to do that on the dead battery because there's a possibility that there's some hydrogen gas around that and we don't want to risk um, causing any sort of spark so what we're going to look for is a piece of bare metal um, or an engine mount, something that's not painted where we could get a nice solid grip and a good ground. So the engine mounts that are exposed on this particular vehicle are actually on the other side and that means the cable is actually going to reach across and that's not really really safe because we don't want to go across any sort of fans. Um, you also want to avoid anything that's attached to the fuse box um, that could have a little bit of an energy surge to, to that. So these strut mounts are absolutely perfect in, in, a, in position or accordance to the battery. So let's go ahead and take our negative cable and hook it up to that strut mount. And now we've completed the circuit. So we've got our negative cable on the dead battery to a piece of bare metal. We've got our positive hooked up there as well. And then on our fully charged vehicle, on the two posts themselves, we've got our positive cable and our negative cable. So the circuit is complete. Let's go ahead and start the vehicle. So now that we're inside of our good vehicle, let's go ahead and start it and let it run for a couple of minutes. And what this is doing is actually charging that battery. And you're using the alternator inside this vehicle to get some power into that one. If the vehicle's really dead, what you might want to do is rev this up to about 2000 RPM, right, to get a really good charge inside that, that vehicle. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to test it without, we're just going to let it run for about two minutes. So we're in the vehicle with the discharge battery and the battery has been charging now with the good vehicle for about two minutes. So let's go ahead and try starting this. As you can see, we've got full power. Everything is turning on. We'll also make sure that everything on this vehicle is off as well. That way we're able to get a good charge from the alternator into the battery. Now, as the discharge vehicle, we're going to leave this one running for a little while. And we're going to go ahead and turn off the other vehicle. And I'm going to show you how to disconnect the jumper cables. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So as we said before, you're going to want to detach your cables in the reverse order. So it's starting off with the discharge battery, that negative cable. You just want to put that aside nice and safe. Make sure it's not touching any sort of metal where it could ground itself again. Let's go to the good battery. Connect the negative there as well. Let's put that on a piece of plastic in this particular case. And disconnecting the positive on and then the... we're going to go back to the positive side on the discharge battery. We're going to unhook that. So now that we've got our cables totally disconnected, we can put these aside. And with your discharge battery, you're going to want to run this for at least 20 minutes or so. Make sure that it gets a good charge. Take it out on the highway and then come back and test the battery. Make sure it starts up again. You know, if it doesn't, that's where you're going to have to take the next measure and see if you need battery, battery replacement or not. I'll stick a link in the description below of how to use a multimeter to test the voltage in that battery, which will actually test it on load as well. Make sure that it's nice and healthy. But effectively, this is the way to charge safely, charge and boost your battery. So hopefully you liked the video and you found it um, beneficial to you. If you liked it, make sure you hit the subscribe button, share it with a friend. And until next time, tune into your home garage.